All right, you may have heard of an advanced lipid panel with markers like ApoB or LP little a, lipoprotein little a. Well, I recently ran those labs on myself and I'm only 30. Why would I do that? The question really is, what kind of old guy do I want to be? <laughs> Despite what many of us think, we have a lot of say in how we age. And I'm not talking like Dave Asprey or Dr. Mark Hyman, live to 180 years old, biohacking bullshit. But I mean to live to 75, 85 years or older and live well, moving autonomously, confidently, and healthy. This question became really real to me when I became a father at 29 years old. Um, I realized that when my daughter would be my age, I would be 60 which means she could have a family and I would be the old grandpa. And how do I make sure that I'm not only alive, but healthy? When she's 30 and maybe has her own kid, I wanna be able to wrestle on the floor, pick them up over my head, kick a soccer ball around, go for a hike and more. Uh, so how do I do that? I gotta think about uh, what's likely going to kill me. And statistically, that's gonna be heart disease, cancer, or neurodegeneration that gets any of us. And mixed in there with everything, making it all worse if it's present is metabolic disease like insulin resistant or type 2 diabetes, diabetes. And this stuff is all mostly in our control. For the most part, these things on this page, heart disease, cancer, neurodegeneration, are at least partly, if not mostly, Western lifestyle diseases. So what can I test at 30 to help me when I'm 60? What would I do today that would make me look back when I'm 60 and make myself happy that I did it? One would be a standard lipid panel. I did a video on this a while back. And then I also want to assess my ApoB and my LP little a, and that's what's going to make 60 year old me pretty happy from what we know in the research today. So basic lipids, how am I doing? Uh, to any conventionally trained primary care doctor, I'm doing okay to possibly even great, depending on who you ask. Um, I'm going to point out the HDL and the direct LDL here. My HDL is 52 and that's my good cholesterol. And it's good because it helps shuffle and organize other fats and cholesterols around between each other and to and from your cells. Uh, so it organizes things like your LDL and that's why it's good. It takes care of and maintains everything. My direct LDL is 102 and it should be less than 100. Now this is your bad cholesterol and it's causally, not associated, not correlated, but causally linked to cardiovascular disease. Ideally lower is better. Um, in cases of more severe cardiovascular disease, we can want it as low as 30 or less. And so you can see here, generally, we just want it less than 100. We could want it as low as 30 for some people. But with these two markers, what am I going to do about it? In my effort to be a old, healthy man, I'm not going to be very aggressive, actually, with these, but I don't want to be passive either. I'd like to see my HDL or my good cholesterol uh, 60 or higher. And one of the ways we can raise HDL is, or several of the ways, is through exercise, eating more monounsaturated fats, and there are some nutrients that can drive up HDL. I'd also like to see my LDL as low as I can get it for a reason we're going to about to see, um, but we can also lower our LDL through exercise, monounsaturated fats, lowering our intake of fried trans saturated fats and increasing our fiber intake. And one of the reasons my LDL might be higher is because I've adopted more of a lazy dad diet. I'm more prone to having these sleep induced cravings or poor sleep induced cravings for things like fries and burgers and pizza and, and stuff that I quote unquote deserve because I've been working so hard. It's probably driving my LDL up a little bit and it's probably not great and be an easy fix to just eat less of those things. Moving on to the advanced markers, my ApoB and LP little a. If you look at my ApoB on the top there, it's controlled and in a good range at, eight, uh, at 84. ApoB is a protein found across all of your literally big, um, figuratively bad cholesterol molecules uh, like your LDL and your LP little a. Uh, knowing ApoB gives us a window into all of our bad cholesterol activity, not just LDL, because it's attached to all of those. I, I'm happy that it's good. My LP little a though is in a high risk range of 48. In some countries, the cutoff is 50 and others it's 30. Either way, I'm not doing great. Let's actually look at LPA, LPA a little bit more. A lipoprotein little a. LP little a is an autonomously bad character in your cholesterol lineup. Um, so it has non-redundant ways of being bad for your arteries and heart valves. Similarly to LDL, we're finding this is causally linked to cardiovascular disease, things like heart attacks. Levels of this are mostly genetically determined and we, we meaning medicine and people much smarter than me, are currently working on drugs and trials to one, 
lower LP little a with things like uh, PCSK9 inhibitors. And then two, to see if lowering LP little a even matters when it comes to preventing um, heart attacks and, and outcomes like that. So LP little a is not a good thing. And if we take another quick detour, I place lines here to show where my 48 level was at relative, um, relative to different models uh, for risk of cardiovascular disease, and these were actually particularly for heart attack. So you can see that 48 isn't the worst, but it's not great either. I, I independently from this LP little they have a higher risk of heart attack than if it was lower. And it's also not a place where my athletic background and current fitness seem to matter all that much. Unique to LP little a, it seems to be one of the few metabolic markers that is not positively influenced, at least significantly, by exercise. So while exercise will increase my HDL, will lower my LDL, will lower my triglycerides, will lower my total cholesterol, it doesn't seem to significantly impact LP little a at all. So what am I going to do about it? Really, what can I do? I can focus on the factors that I can for sure control like ApoB and LDL. There's evidence that certain nutrients like uh, niacin, L-carnitine, CoQ10 can decrease LPA levels, but we're not super certain on those things yet. Um, and before I dive into going kind of heavy on this weird cardiovascular nutraceutical protocol, I'd rather just focus on driving down my ApoB, which accounts for my LDL and LP little a. We're also gonna talk about blood sugar in my next video because it ties together the whole cardio metabolic picture. Uh, for cardiovascular disease to be taken into context, we have to look at blood sugar and insulin regulation. Uh, metabolic syndrome and diabetes, things like that, dramatically increase cardiovascular risk. So even if you don't have, or I don't have diabetes yet, I want to ensure, or even pre-diabetes, I want to ensure that my insulin sensitivity looks good. A quick way to screen for this would be a fasting insulin. The gold standard would be a glucose tolerance test, but we're going to save all this for a future video so that this thing doesn't get too long or overwhelming. So as a quick recap, my HDL and LDL were mostly okay, but could be better. My ApoB looked good, but I have to consider that this independently bad risk factor is present in my elevated LPA. With that considered, I want to lower my LDL and ApoB further so that I can only have one causal risk factor staring me in the face rather than two. Um, I want to keep that LDL as low as possible so that causal link in LDL is low and all I'm worried about is LPA. I also want to keep my blood pressure and blood sugar in check, but these will be future videos. And I hope you found some use or found some information out of this. Most of our health, especially our longevity, especially me wanting to be a happy, fit old guy, comes back to my nutrition, movement, mindset, being healthy on purpose. Um, again, if I can do anything about it, I want to be doing cannonballs into swimming pools and lakes with my daughter and her kid or kids when I am a fit old man. So leave your questions in the comments. Feel free to find me on uh, social media or at my website. I will see you guys next time.